Well, speaking of prison, Suge actually became a, a grandfather for the first time in prison. Mm. That must be sad to not to be able to really see your grandkids because mm. you're doing 28 years. Uh, you have grandkids? Yeah. Five grandsons. Five grandsons. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you understand the uh, how unfortunate that is. Yeah. I don't have any grandkids myself, but right. Uh, yeah. You know, I think Ray J is trying to get a, a meeting with Trump to try to get him out. <laughs> I don't see that one happening. <laughs> Good luck with that. I can't see Trump pardoning Suge Knight. I just do not comprehend that. I can't see Ray J talking to Trump about <laughs> pardoning Suge Knight. <laughs> yes, Oh, that's the funniest shit you told me, man, in a long time. Wow. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, and apparently uh, they talked about selling his life rights and stuff like that. They're saying that Ray J had his life rights, but mm-hmm. then they came back and said that, well, Ray J has just certain rights, I think, for like documentaries and his someone else has a life rights. Didn't they music. do a death row documentary mm-hmm. or something? Death row? They've done a few. I'm talking about this recent one that um, Ray J might have been involved in. Well, Suge was in that one uh, Antoine Fuqua did, mm-hmm. uh, American Nightmare. Mm-hmm. That was I think on Showtime. That that got aired right after he got convicted after he took the plea deal. Right. There was a lot of stuff, but I remember I just interviewed Matt Barnes, and at one My point, God, man. yeah, Shout yeah, great Matt interview, Barnes, great man. interview, Matt's and uh, sharp. Matt's very sharp, very smart. Yeah, very smart, and I. Th- I think the coolest part about that interview is that so many people hit me and said, yo, the way Matt has been portrayed in the media, we thought he was a certain type of person. And after this interview, we see that it's completely different. Mm-hmm. Once he actually you know, sat down for two hours and got to say his side of, of his whole story. Right. And he actually bought Suge Knight's life rights at one point. Mm. And then when he started getting ready to do the project... Then you found out that it was signed to this person and this other person had a signature and they needed money for this and he just walked away from the whole thing. Right. You actually own the life rights to Suge Knight? No, so I was a part of a pro, uh, a project that we did current or we, we did have the rights to uh, through his niece. Uh, but it just kind of started getting messy the further and further it went down. I uh, ended up hooking them up with... Messy uh, business with Suge Knight? Really? Right, I've never heard of that before. I ended up hooking them up <laughs> with, uh, with Mark Kenton, the creative power, and, and, and had these guys all excited about doing the story. And then, you know, once this shit got real, there was, you know, so-and-so needs this amount of money and so-and-so needs that amount of money. And now someone else is, because we didn't get this, someone else has the right. So it just kind of got messy. Right, <laughs> that yeah. whole ball of ball of yarn that yeah. is tied up with Suge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nah. Yeah, Matt Barnes don't seem like he he'd be wrapped up into that. If if you know if too many people involved. In oh it, yeah, nah. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I kind of always felt this is doing business with Suge. You're always gonna run into problems of one, one in some you way or could. another. You could anticipate it. Yeah, I've never heard anyone say, man, I did this business deal with Suge and it was just so smooth and straightforward and right. I got my money right. and I can't wait to do another deal with him. Right. I've never actually heard of this in life. No, no, <laughs> no. I mean, you know, he was, L.A. was, he had L.A. in fear, you know, I mean, industry-wise. Yeah. You know, he, you know, he, he could show up at your door with, However many people, and you was pretty much going to give him what he wanted, you know, if you was in fear of your life or whatever. So, yeah, that, that played out all bad. You know, it's just what you put in the, what you put in the atmosphere. You know, it, it has a way of finding its way back to you. That's a prime example. Oh, yeah, no, I've, I'm not going to say who it is because it was a private conversation, but the son of a very famous music person, a very famous music person, mm-hmm. said that one day Suge just showed up at his door. To talk about some business shit. (laughs) So he let him in. And it ultimately worked out okay. But just the fact that this guy would just show up at your door. He didn't even know he knew where he lived. Yeah. Didn't even know. (laughs) I didn't even know where I live. Here you are at my front door. Asking to have him. You know, nothing was scheduled. People say what they want about Suge. Suge knew who to pick to prey on. 
he knew who to pick to pray on because he got away with it. He got away with it. At no point was he met at the, you know, with the barrel of a gun or. Oh, yes, he you was. Know, I mean. He in, absolutely was. In these deals. Yeah. In these Hollywood deals. People were shaking in their boots when he was in their office. They'd be like, when he downstairs, let me know so I can get up out of here. You know, yeah, he had that kind of fear. No, when I And when it I wasn't had, smart. I'm not saying it was smart by no stretch of the It wasn't smart at all. Because I, mean, I remember when I had, well, Vlad TV was based in the Universal Building in New York. Mm -hmm. We were part of SRC. There was a picture of him in the security office that says, do not admit. Do not let into the building. Damn and, it. And they told me the story was was that he had threatened the president of Universal mm -hmm. uh, at the time. So because of that situation, not only was he had pictures of him in the security offices, but the that that president had a armed security guard in the front of the building that literally stood out there the entire day, would, you know, let, let the guy out of his car. Let him walk in the building, and then when he came back out, he would walk him to his car. That's what he did the whole day because of Suge Knight. Because mm. Suge felt like he was owed some money because, you know, Universal was part of, you know, was the parent company of Interscope, Interscope and, you know, yeah. and Death Row for that matter. Right. So it's like the money's kind of intermixed there, and Suge felt that he was owed some money, so he probably threatened the guy, and there you have it. Right. Now you're not even allowed in the building. Right. You got to spend all this extra money because you got this guy who's – threatening to kill you or whatever happened. I'm not saying that's what happened, right. but clearly there was something to the point of that mm -hmm. situation happening. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully Suge serves his time as well and comes out a cool, mellow dude, maybe does a reality <laughs> show, <laughs> something. What, what would the reality show be? Hey, man. I, think I mean, people... if he's selling this story to everybody right now, his story going to probably be told at least four or five times within the next 20 years he has to do, 23 years or whatever. So, I mean, that's going to be like um, like Sirhan Sirhan getting out right now and, you mm. know, <laughs> everybody being interested in what he got going on. Yeah. 